Hi, I'm the gay Doug DiMerno, and this, this, this is my meal ticket to fame and fortune. Really nice night with friends in Des Moines. So we're on the road again. The XL1 is gently getting packed up by Alan. As you can tell, it's a bit of a difficult one because the, it doesn't really have an awful lot of room. This is not the world's most practical touring car, is it? Yeah. So we're in Des Moines. Uh, we're hoping to make Laramie today. It's 670 miles, uh, which is a long way, and an 800cc electric supercar thing, which there's one in America. It's a little bit stressful driving it on American roads, I'd have to say, especially considering like the nearest services in Bullsburg. Yes, reversing with TV cameras is interesting. I can't even see Alan. He's supposed to be directing me. The thing with the XL1 is that it is completely honed to do one specific thing, which is 313 miles to the gallon. At the time, Volkswagen wanted to have the most economical car, the fastest car with a Bugatti, and the most luxurious cars with a Phaeton, and even with the, the Bentley. So it does mean that this car does not have a lot of creature comforts, nor is it particularly practical. I think I've mentioned before about the inability to be able to charge it in America. Uh, the um, charging network doesn't isn't compatible with the charging port, and it does affect its usability. Um, we also find that once you go above 70 miles an hour, the fuel economy drops so much that the benefit of having that extra speed is completely lost by the continually having to stop for fuel because it only has a two and a bit gallon tank so when it drops down to 60 something miles to the gallon you're realistically having to refuel you know every hour and a half so not not a particularly uh, great transcontinental cruiser which you would have imagined a 313 mile to the gallon car would have been i want to talk a little bit about why we're doing this in such an unsuitable car the car attracts so much attention that we thought it would be a really good idea if we wanted to raise money for charity to go and do it in something like this because everybody stops and stares and there's just so much interest in it. People kind of look at it, they don't really know what it is but they know it shouldn't be here. Some people think it's a kit car, uh, most people think it's completely electric. Um, yesterday someone thought it was a Tesla which I thought was pretty impressive but considering it's such an old design. Um, with it being from 2014, but it, it genuinely people really love seeing it. Um, we drive down the road and we get waves and we get smiles. I think I've had our photograph taken about three million times in the last you know three days. But all of it is mainly because we wanted to raise as much money as possible for Alzheimer's research. Because when you kind of get into that 30 to 50 age range that starts to touch more in your life. Everyone that we have spoken to has had some effect of it, either a parent, uh, a partner, or, or, or a grandparent even for a younger person. And we wanted to use the car to raise as much money as possible for a really worthwhile cause. And if I, it, it, it's, it's amazing we have actually hit our target after three days of driving it. We've raised 3, 000, over 3,000 pounds but it would be nice if that continued on because every single penny of that goes to Alzheimer's research. But thank you very much for everyone for donating. It's all going to go directly to the charity and they're going to hopefully do lots of good work with it with research into finding cures and ways of managing Alzheimer's. So I can't thank you enough. Um, Sean can organize it. By the way, okay. big, big thank you to Sean Hudson who edits these videos. You can follow him on Twitter at Sean Hudson. He spells Sean like a Welsh person. Welcome to the XL1. We haven't really done any internal videos yet because uh, it's a little cramped in here and a little noisy. So we kind of wired up a mic and we have the phone on a mount and we're hoping that we can do our best. But today we're, I think we mentioned earlier on one of the other clips. Let's cut to a map. Um, oh, we did um. Don't do ums. No ums. Um. Um. <laughs> I did an um. Ah, stop saying um. Uh, um. Um. Stop laughing. You're making the video. <laughs> Holy. Where were we?
I hope that Swedish pick and mix yet that way. <laughs> Sorry, there's a video that I did many, many years ago in the Fiat Panda, which was um, a video review of Swedish roadside cafe pick and mix, um, which uh, all tasted of aniseed and were disgusting. Um, but we should really like recreate that at some point. So today is Laramie. We just left um, Des Moines this morning. Des Moines. Des Moines. Okay, that's the rest of my Brooklyn voice. We did Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Des Moines. We're in Des Moines. Right. We left Des Moines this morning. Uh, we have 1,916 kilometers on the car. It, our consumption at the minute is 2.8 liters per 100 kilometers. It's not great because we sort of fluttered about an awful lot in Des Moines, so the car doesn't really like that. But our overall average consumption since we started is much lower. Yesterday we had 145 mpg, which is really quite good for this thing because we can't actually charge it up. It's a plug-in hybrid and it has no way of actually charging here. Um, it can't charge from the public charging network, nor can we plug it into a um, household main socket because the frequency of American electricity is slightly different to European and the car just does not like it. So we're running completely on the hybrid technology inside the Volkswagen, which is a bit of a shame because it only charges the internal batteries up to uh, 25% and it's a very, very small battery. It's only 5.5 kilowatts, roughly the same as what's in the new Citroen Ami. Oh, this is a lot of data. Big data dump. <laughs> but the car has actually performed very well. I've, I've had this car in Germany before and it wasn't very happy with long trips, not been plugged into the mains, um, having generally sort of been used like an actual car. Um, and I'd have to say that it, it has actually been okay. We do get occasionally lights on for the... Um, the glow plug light flashes, which I believe is something to do with the diesel system on the car. So we're sort of hoping that that doesn't cause huge issues, but it's happened a couple of times. But I mean, this is a museum car, it belongs to the Land Motor Museum. It's been on display with them for several years. And then before that, it was on display in a German Volkswagen dealer showroom. So it hasn't had an awful lot of driving. I think actually our current, just to scroll through the uh, very interesting, I'm sure. Do you know our oil temperature is 98 degrees centigrade? Coolant temperature is 90. We're doing 105 kilometers per hour. Cruising at an altitude, no, it doesn't actually do that one. Um, but we have 23,549 kilometers on this. So, yeah, not an awful lot of uh, distance on a 2014 car, especially one that's quite as technical as this. By the way, it is so technical, we can't actually take this to a Volkswagen dealer. So if this car breaks down out here, we are completely stuffed. Because the only way that we can get maintenance is that we have to fly a team of Volkswagen engineers from Wolfsburg at our expense to fix it. And even like the tires, the tires are 800 pounds or about a thousand dollars a pop. And they are not available in the US. So we're going to have to like import a tire if we blow out a tire. Oh yeah, and there's no spare. So, perfect car for road tripping. So after leaving Des Moines this morning, we have put about 30 kilometers on the car, which really isn't that much. That's what, about 20 miles? 20 miles? Yeah. Did you say 20 miles? Yes. My co-pilot, Alan, and Fawn Holder Extraordinaire is in the background. I think you might just see his arm in the corner of the frame. There we go. Um, say hello, Alan. Hello, Alan. Um, we left Des Moines this morning at about 8 o'clock. We have 670 miles to get to Laramie, which is in Wyoming. Uh, we also have to cross... What's the other state we have to cross? Uh, to, to. We don't know and we don't care. It's a long way away. Ooh, a little update. Um, I know it sounds like YouTube clickbait, but... Uh, Alan checked the weather for Laramie where we're heading and it's kind of looking pretty rough. Uh, it's minus one and 15 centimeters of snow. Obviously we're in a experimental prototype Volkswagen that was sold to the public with very little development. So we're not really terribly sure that the XL1 is going to cope with that. So we're looking at rerouting, hopefully going through Casper. Um, really don't know. I know it sounds like YouTube clip bit, but um, keep watching. We'll have an update tomorrow and let you know how we get on. Thanks for watching. Bye.
Well, things are just getting better and better.